So over the last few years, wing has been a pretty strong position for Wales. You had Josh Adams and Lewis Rees-Samit really nailing down that position, with Rio Dyer offering a good bit of competitiveness as he was trying to break through and steal one of those spots. But now Rees-Samit is gone and Josh Adams' form has certainly dipped. I think it's a good time to have a debate about who's coming through and what the options could potentially be. My name's Christian and this is the Welsh Sports Podcast. So in this one, I don't really want to talk too much about the established players in Adams and Dyer. We know what we've got in them. I spoke about Dyer a lot in my last video. Um, Adams' form has improved since he's gone back to Cardiff and he seems like he's slightly more fit. Also, he's been playing more on the left wing. Interestingly, Adams tends to play on the left wing for Cardiff. Dyer tends to play on the right wing for, right wing for the Dragons, but they switch them around for Wales, but I don't know. But what I wanted to do is look at more what was coming through. So you had like Grady, who was another option, but I think he's generally seeming like he's going to be playing at 13 since he's come back from international duty. That's where he's been starting his games at. So I wanted to look a bit below that and see who's going to come through. So the first player who I think deserves to be looked at certainly is Keelan Giles. Giles is someone who's sort of been around for a while and always had a little bit of promise. Unfortunately, struggled with fitness a lot had a few bad injuries and it stunted his development. But this season, he's had a run of being healthy and it really shows nine tries in 14 games is a really good return. What's really impressed me at this season is he's been able to get over the gain line a lot with just footwork. You've seen him at times caught, maybe standing from a standing start and he just uses really good footwork, puts defenders off balance and he half breaks tackles and stuff like that. Um, He's been really sort of just deadly for them. Whenever he's had opportunities, he's, he's broke defences open and he's really, really improved his finishing. Not only that, is he's improved his defence as well. It's always been slightly suspect in my opinion, but it seems like it's got a lot better this year. And he's been really influential for what Ospreys have been doing and the performances that they've had over the last few months. Clearly something that someone that Toby Booth uh, likes because he's picking him week in, week out whenever he's fit. In the big games, he's picking him. And, uh, at, you know, at 26, he's coming into his own now. And I think if he continues with the last few games of the form he's had, I think Gatlin's going to have to take a look at him in these summer tours. I think he certainly deserves that because he's been very, very consistent and he's definitely been one of Osprey's best players, if not their best back, full stop. Then if we move on to the Osprey's bitter rivals, we've got Tom Rogers at the Scarlet. Tom Rogers is actually someone who I spoke about at the start of the season, who I was looking forward to seeing what he produces this year. He had a good end to last season. He was getting consistent game time. He was getting involved in the Wales camps. Uh, he actually was part of the Six Nations team at the beginning. Um, I think his problem has been that the Scarlets have been poor, so it's been generally hard for him to be influential on games, although he has scored a few tries. Um, what's annoyed me this season about him is his discipline has actually gone sort of a bit downhill. A few times I've, see, I've watched Scarlets and I've seen him sort of take people out in the air, and, you know, sometimes it does happen. These players are chasing down and it's rugby incidents and stuff, but one or two he's just, like, sort of cleaned them out and um, you can't afford to do stuff like that at any sort of level, let alone once you get to the international level. Um, I think he's better suited to fullback because I'm not sure if he's got that gas express pace that you need on the wing, especially, again, at the international level. But he's got really good core skills. Um, it's so when, I, when I've explained to him about him before, I've said he doesn't really look like he's going fast, but he's got a very balanced running style, um, very elusive and... Um, he, he knows his way to the try line. His problem is he's almost sort of regressed slightly this season. And this was needing really to be the season where he starts to kick on and puts his hand up like a, like a Giles has. Um, I know, I mean, he's still young. He's only 25. So he's got plenty of time. I still think he's going to be involved in like the international setup. I'm pretty sure that Gatland will still bring him in because it's someone who he's obviously liked the luck of and looked at in the past. We just want to see a little bit more consistency from him. Uh, cut out this stupid discipline uh, issues that he's had because it's it's not uh, you know you don't need it in your game. I think it potentially could be just frustration about how the Scarlet season has sort of panned out. But a good summer now in the Scarlet's training and 
probably in the Wales camp, and we could see him straight back up the peck in order. Moving away from the Scarlets now to the capital city, the youngest player on this list, and that is Theo Cabango. He's another one who's dealt with a lot of injuries recently, and he is a smaller player, so you could see him potentially pick these little injuries up. But in fairness to him, he's come back over the last couple of games for Cardiff and he's literally hit the ground running. He's absolutely got electric pace on the wing, really good footwork and um, he's been very impressive for Cardiff in the small outings he's had. They definitely missed him when he was gone and now he's come back, he's really in injected a bit of extra pace and that little bit of fear on the outside. He definitely knows his way to the try line. My worry for him is, again, his size. He's, he's quite undersized for professional rugby, even on the wing, um, and could be potentially something that defences take advantage of because he's not the most uh, best defender. Um, so I don't know. I, th I think there's promise in Cabango. He's improved every season that he's been in the Cardiff setup. So uh, again, he's only 22, so there's plenty of time for him to continue to develop. But he's obviously not going to grow or get much bigger physically than that. And I think that's going to be his biggest curse. Although it also is one of his biggest assets because it's his pace and his low centre of gravity. And it allows him to find space. When he's, once he's in space, he's an absolute monster. He's just gone and it's so hard for defenders to get anywhere near him. But um, there isn't a lot of space in international rugby. But if he, again, similar to these other players like Giles, if he continues to perform and keeps getting on that score sheet, Cardiff play a nice brand of rugby where they're trying to work the ball wide. If he continue continue to get his hands on the ball and make opportunities for himself and other players, again, he's another one who's going to be hard for Warren Gatland to ignore. But just by chance, we've gone full circle and we're going to end up at the Dragons. And a player that I've actually really, really liked this year is Jared Rosser. Now, I must admit, I've never really noticed him in previous seasons. He's 26, so he's been around a while now. When I was making this video, I was actually surprised to see that he was actually 26. Because, uh, like I said, I haven't really noticed him for uh, other seasons. I think this year he's been really impressive with like his work rate, his want for the ball and just his want to be involved in sort of anything influential in the game. He covers the backfield well, he's good with the ball in his hands, strong, uh, quite big and he, he's even been, you know, like counter-rucking. He scored a great try against uh, Zebra where he picked up and just gassed it down the wing and just left literally everyone for dead. Um, He's been he's been very impressive this season. He's been one of Dragon's best players outside of maybe Dyer in the backs. Uh, so I really would be interested to see if Gatlin does want to have a look at him. He's more in that mould of a Gatlin player, the bigger, uh, stronger winger. But he does, again, have a lot of pace. Um, he's still quite got a few issues in his game, like just maybe core skills at times. Uh, but I, I I think that comes from just trying so hard to be like an influence on the game. He wants multiple touches. He wants to be involved in just everything going on around, which, again, I really like. I think he's uh, he's got an opportunity now with there being... like When you look at those like four players that I've named, Giles, Rogers, Cabango and Rossa, you wouldn't look really at any of them and say that one of them has been impossible to ignore. You could probably argue Giles has been has been the best out of those but you can't say he's he's begging to be picked and needs to be picked so i think good performances from any of these guys now as the season comes to an end it's going to really be eye catching for gatlin because again i think he's going to stick with dyer and adams but under that it's definitely up for grabs there's I, in my opinion there's two players uh, two positions up for grabs because you're going to need plenty of cover um, I think Rogers guessed one because he's already sort of been in favour um, and he can cover fullback. But I think there's opportunities for these other guys. Maybe Cabango needs a little bit more time, had a lot of time on the sidelines, still very young. But like I said, Giles, Rosser, these guys can compete for opportunities. And with the summer tour, I'm not sure how Gatland is going to approach it, whether he's going to go 
like particularly developmental or he's going to go really hard to get a win which I think is probably my opinion the best thing that he should do so if he does decide to go experimental then these are the type of players that could get an opportunity and um, I would like to see Rossa in the squad and just see with like the coaching that they have and in that system what he can offer a big strong guy off the uh, off the wing so that is it for the wingers but before I go I did want to touch on this Liam Williams story that's been floating around for anyone who didn't see it, it was a comment or some in some sort of press that uh, Liam Williams had, had an interview and he'd said that he'd been in touch with Warren Gatland and Gatland had basically said to him, you're still in my thoughts, I want you involved in the team. Um, I don't really know what to think about this, to be honest. Uh, obviously, it's definitely something that happened because Liam Williams isn't going to make that type of stuff up. Is that just Gatland wanting to get Liam Williams to maybe come back into somewhere in Wales because is it plausible for him to be in Japan and coming back and being involved in the setup I'm not too sure is it just he maybe wants him for this summer tour like I was saying is he going to really target the summer tour and try and get a win and he might feel that Liam Williams is his best option for that again not sure um, to me I I love Liam Williams. He's been an amazing servant for Wales. And until literally this Six Nations, I was well, would have loved for him to still be starting for Wales. But with the emergence of Cam Winnett, I don't think the need is necessarily there for him. Um, I think he would be good in the squad. But are you going to be sacrificing one of these other young players to put Liam Williams in the team for maybe a year? Because... You know, he's had a lot of injuries recently. He's got a lot of miles on the clock. Um, with his abrasive play style, he's been picking up a lot more injuries. So is it going to be worth it? I'm not sure. Get him in the squad? Yeah, I'm all up for that. Um, maybe a, a position on the bench. But I just think, like I said, with the with the emergence of Winnet, and even I don't know what the situation is with Max Nagy, whether he, when he can play for Wales and whether it's something he wants to do. He has recently signed a an extension with the Osprey so he's going to be staying for a little while longer so I'm not really sure how that works um, but if we have options between like Nagy and Winnet, I don't think there is the need to bring in Liam Williams but if you want to bring him in the squad and get him in the setup maybe in the summer you know someone who's a proven winner who's been there and done that and he's got plenty of grit um, I, w- I would be happy with that but I- I'm not sure that he belongs in the starting lineup anymore um but i'd like to know what you guys think on this one uh, that's all for me catch you on the next one